Hey everyone, it's James from the Fit RV, and I'm here today to talk to you about nuisance tripping. Well, not exactly that kind of nuisance tripping. This kind of nuisance tripping. Owners of smaller motorhomes, like our Winnebago Travado here, are probably all too familiar with that scenario. With only 30 amps to work with, it's pretty easy to go over that limit and to trip a breaker. And it's even easier to do that when you do this. So right now, our coach is hooked up at home to this 20 amp outlet. And with only 20 amps to work with, it's even easier to go over that limit and trip. Now, a lot of people advise against doing this, but let's face it, everybody does. So that's why I'm really excited to show you this little piece of electronic wizardry that Winnebago has put in our coach that helps prevent nuisance tripping. It's this little guy right here, an energy management system. Now, it performs a couple functions, and the first one is it's a very basic ammeter, so you can know at a glance how many amps your coach is drawing. And right now, with just a few LED lights on, you can see our coach is pulling 0.0, .0 amps. But let's add a small load. So, I've got my curlers here, and I've got a kilowatt meter. And this kilowatt, if you don't know, is just something that'll show you how many watts or amps you're pulling with a particular appliance. I'm going to plug in my curlers. And we'll see that I'm pulling 4. Point, looks like 4.7, 4.5-ish amps. And if we go back and look at our energy management system, we can see that it's reporting a 4-amp draw. So there you go, some basic electrical metering. But the bigger benefit of the EMS is that it can help save you from nuisance tripping. So the way it does that is with this little button right here, you can tell it if you're connected to a 20-amp or a 30-amp connection. And it's going to do what it can to keep you under that limit and prevent any nuisance tripping. It's going to do that by shutting down loads in a pre-programmed order to keep you under the limit. So the first thing it's going to shut down if you get close to the limit is it's going to shut down the electrical element on the water heater. The next thing it's going to shut down is it's going to shut down the electrical components of the refrigerator. And finally, the very last thing it's going to cut down is the air conditioning, which kind of goes along with my personal philosophy of you can take away my air conditioning when you pry it out of my comfortably cool dead hands. So let's see it in action. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is hit the select button and make sure I tell that we've just got 20 amps to work with. So that's what's going to try to keep us under. Now I'm going to turn on the air conditioner and watch what happens. Okay, and we should have seen a momentary spike up to like 14, 16 amps or so, but now it's settled down running the air conditioner at 12 amps. Pretty efficient. So let's throw a little bit more load at it. I'm going to go turn on the electric element on the refrigerator. And there we go. We've got one more amp, 13 amps. I guess the refrigerator doesn't draw very much. So now let's stump it. I'm going to throw on the electric element on the Truma to heat the water. And did you see that? So the electric element on the Truma came on, it got up to like 25 amps, EMS said there's no way I'm going to be able to handle that, and it's cut power to the water heater. And if you look here at the Truma, you can see I've got a little, uh, little warning saying I don't have enough power in order to run. So now, I'm going to try something even a little more crazy. We're going to throw the microwave on and see what happens. Check that out. So the microwave's still running, but uh, it got up to like 24 amps and said, I can't do it. So it shut down the refrigerator, had to shut down the air conditioner, and I'm pulling 11 amps with the microwave. So there we go. It's prevented me from tripping any breakers. All this stuff will eventually come on when I stop the microwave. This will eventually, after a couple minutes to recover, it'll cycle back on. So now that you know what the EMS can do, how can you get one? 
Well, it has to be built into the coach. Our own Travato has one, as does any Winnebago product that has a Trumacombi or Aldi heating system. Now, the larger 50 amp coaches, they have a system that will allow them to run even when they're only connected to a 30 amp service. And there's still some other Winnebago products that have a simpler system using relays. Um, but whichever system you have, they're all trying to accomplish the same thing, and that's to keep you spending more time enjoying your RV and less time crawling around resetting breakers. That's all for now. We'll see you next time. Bye.